I wanted to share some thoughts with you that I've had on being patient unto the coming of the Lord. James 5 verse 7 says, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. So we are told to be patient. Now patience is necessary in order for the believer to be ready for the coming of the Lord. There takes a preparation for us to become ready for this event. Patience enables us to wait for his coming while not becoming distracted by the things of this world. There are many things around us that can pull our vision off of, of Christ, but patience will help us to maintain our eyes onto our Lord. Patience is a virtue that is seen more and more clearly over time. A person that has been newly converted, you'll be able to see some parts of patience in this person, but to the one who has been a very seasoned veteran of the Lord, you'll be able to see more clearly throughout their lifetime evidence of patience in them overcoming trials and uh, things, as, things like this. Now the husbandman is said to have waited with long patience for the precious fruit of the earth. Also in James 5, uh, it says, Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Amen. So we are admonished to be ye also patient, just as this husbandman was patient when he sowed the seed and he waited for a long time to see the fruit of his labors. He was patient to see the fruit. And we are to be patient in the same manner. That when we come into the Lord and we, we hear of his coming again and, and that we are to watch and wait patiently, then we are to do so for the duration of our time here on this earth. There's, there is no stopping and starting when it comes to patience. This is a continuation. This is done continu continuously. We do not want it said of us that we only endured for a short time as that seed that was sown on the rocky soil that sprang up but in the heat of the day when it, it didn't have root and it withered away. We want, to be, we want it to be said of us that we endured unto the end, that we were faithful. I am reminded of the disciples of Jesus who left from following him when confronted with a hard saying. John 6, 56 said, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. When these disciples heard this saying, their conclusion was, this is a hard saying. We can't, we can't follow after this man any longer. In verse 60, it says, Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying, and who can hear it? And this was many of his disciples. There are many professing Christians today who appear to have what it takes to follow Jesus. They may go to church on Sunday or maybe even on Wednesday if, if they're really devoted. They do good deeds to those less fortunate than themselves. They appear to have a love for the brethren. And they know all the Bible stories. They can quote the scriptures. Maybe they can quote passages of the scriptures. So all their outward manifestations appear to be in line with what you would consider a Christian to be. The only problem is that they can't endure strong doctrine. They can't abide hearing the gospel. They want to hear the gentle words that lull them into a spiritual stupor. They don't want to be convicted of sin and unrighteousness. So when it comes down to the outward image of what a Christian should be, as, as those who think that a Christian should be. They appear to be perfect, but inwardly they are ungodly, unholy, and unrighteous, completely unlike God. These are those who will leave from following after the Lord because they have no patience. They cannot endure through a long season of waiting. When they hear a hard saying, they will turn around and they will not follow after the Lord anymore. 
And continuing in John chapter 6, verses 66 through 69, it says, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you go away also? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So these disciples are those, that the, those disciples who stayed are those who had patience to endure. They had faith to believe. And even when a hard saying was uttered, they, were, they, were not, they did not stumble at the saying. They could receive the truth, no matter how hard it, it might have been or whatever the price would have been. It didn't matter because they had already left all to follow him to begin with. There was, there was no, no price too great to pay for following after the Lord. So those who are waiting with patience will not be turned aside from following after their Lord for any reason. We, will, we as those who, are fo who follow the Lord, will receive the truth, no matter how difficult it may be. We have already given all to follow our Lord. There is nothing of greater worth than him to us, brethren. We believe and are sure that eternal life can only be granted and obtained through Christ Jesus. And this is why we wait patiently for his return. We know that there, our only hope of obtaining eternal life is through him. So we keep our eyes fixed to watch for his return. Amen. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Those who are waiting with patience will not be distracted by these things of the world that, would, uh, that others would stumble over. We'll be so busy waiting for our Lord and keeping our eyes fixed on Him that we will not really have time to, to worry about the things of this world. We know that our Lord is coming again. We are confident of this. He has promised that he would return, and we believe the promise that he has made. And he has told us that a re his reward will be with him. Amen. So we are looking and eagerly waiting for his return. Now we know that no man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man shall come. So we have concluded then that he can come at any time. Therefore, we live in a manner in which whether, we, whether, we, whether he comes in, the, in a moment or in years to come, that we will live every moment as though this moment is the moment that he will come. We will not be found uh, unfaithful at the time of his appearing, for we will live in a manner where we are ready at every moment. If we have patience, then we will not be caught unawares at his coming because patience will make the believer alert and aware of what's going on around them while not being distracted by the things of this world. We'll not be distracted away from our primary goal, which is to be found faithful at his coming. We must wait as the five wise vir virgins waited, with oil in our vessels, lamps trimmed and burning, and ready to enter into the marriage supper at the moment that the call is made. We will not be found as the five foolish virgins who were not ready. Finally, brethren, James 5 verse 8 points out that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Knowing that our time of waiting is limited and that it is short, will help us to continue in patience, knowing that we have but a little time to endure. Amen. Patience will enable us to endure temptation and to finish the race victoriously. We know that if he tarries longer than our lives here on this earth, we have but to wait until our death before we will 
come face to face with him. So we know that whether he comes to us or we go to him, we will surely see his face very soon. James 1.12 said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Now there is a reward for those who continued in patience. This reward is eternal life. Romans 2.7 says, And to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So brethren, this surely is worth any effort that we may have to make on our part to wait to receive eternal life. 2 Peter 3, verses 11 through 13 says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So, brethren, our patience will be rewarded, not only with eternal life, but with uh, a home in the world to come, a new heavens and a new earth. So, brethren, let us be found faithful in the day of his coming, that we found that we have endured with patience and have waited for his return. Let us live in a manner today that we can say, on that day, lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us. It is the Lord, and we have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So brethren, I encourage you this night to be patient and wait for his coming, for there is a great reward ready for those who have been found faithful at his coming.